Are you looking to learn how to restore old cast iron pans? Or do you just have a rusty pan lying around that you're looking to put back into the kitchen? Or maybe you're curious about how connecting a car battery to an old rusty pan could leave it coming out like new. Well, you've come to the right place because today we're speaking with Dave Mateka, who is an expert in sourcing, appraising, and restoring vintage cast iron cookware. Enjoy. All right, so I'm gonna show you a little uh, area that I use in my house for um, restoration on cast iron skillets. Um, it is a messy process, so you kinda of wanna have an area to do this that's probably not your kitchen. Um, you'll make a mess. Um, so obviously, if you look, these skillets, they're caked in seasoning and coating and all kinds of crud. So we wanna get as much of that off as possible before we put it in the E-tank. Um, otherwise, it just kinda of gets in the system and it messes it all up. and um, so basically what I'll do here is while the skillet is dry, I'm going to take easy off oven and grill cleaner. Um, this stuff is, uh, is pretty potent stuff, so it's best to wear a respirator. Uh, I'm a rebel, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but basically you just spray it on where needed. It kind of comes out as this white foamy stuff. Um, you see it bubbling and it's doing its thing. Um, typically I'm going to let this sit for like I don't know, at least three hours, maybe up to six, uh, before I go ahead and kind of scrub it off. Um, but again, this is just to get the bulk of the crud off as much as possible before we go ahead and put it in the tank. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the E-Tank, which is short for electrolysis tank. Uh, electrolysis is how I clean my cast iron. Some people do lye tanks and other processes, but I find this to be the easiest and, and, and the cleanest, really. Uh, so basically, um, I'm gonna pull the skillet that's been in there for two days out. You're gonna see what it looks like once it's been in the E-Tank for 48 hours. Um, and um, I have no idea what it's gonna look like, but we're gonna see it together. All right, so as you can see, the seasoning is flaky and falls right off. All of this stuff will come off with the, the scrubbing of a finger. Um, I will take some stainless steel wool to it just to get any of the stubborn stuff off. But as you can see, this thing's been in there for two days. I did literally nothing but spray it with oven cleaner, clean that off, and then put it in the E-tank. So um, it might need to go back in. Sometimes you don't get so lucky. Sometimes you'll have to do two rounds in the E-tank or you know, maybe do an extra 12 hours or 24 hours just to get it perfect. Um, but this one's actually looking really nice, so this one should be done. All right, so the E-tank process, um, it's called electrolysis. Okay, so obviously electricity is involved. Uh, when you're using electricity and water, it's best to be uh, extremely careful and kind of know what you're doing because uh, you can get zapped. Um, typically, uh, you use a car battery charger or something like that that runs at like two to five amps. Um, and pretty much it's the opposite of how chroming works. So instead of adding stuff to the metal, we are pulling stuff from the metal. So um, if you look at the tank here, you'll see it's this is pretty much the standard E-tank setup. Um, I've gone a, a little crazy and I put like a drain valve in the bottom so it's easier to drain it because you have to drain these like you know, every 20 pans you do. Um, so this is just a little support beam. It has a copper wire. That is what I hang the skillet or whatever I'm cleaning from. It then hangs suspended in the cleaning solution. The solution is a mixture of water and uh, sodium carbonate, which is washing soda. Um, it's important to get the measurements right on that um, because you want to basically create an ionic solution inside the tank. And if you put too much washing soda or too little washing soda, uh, you can screw that up and you can either burn out your battery charger or you could damage the piece that you're restoring. Um, so, and all this information is available on Google. You know, you, there's, there's people who have, you know, step-by-step -step tutorials on how to build an e-tank and what the best process is for, for doing it are. So it's not overwhelming. Trust me, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, but now I'm going to kind of go over the layout of the e-tank. So before we do anything, we're going to disconnect the positive 
and the negative leads, these are coming from a battery charger that's inside. Um, it's really important that you put your e-tank outside because it releases gas um, during the process. And some of those gases like hydrogen and stuff like that are flammable and toxic. So if you have this in your basement, you could blow your house up. But as you see, um, my battery charger is then inside my garage and it's running outside to my e-tank. So it's sitting on a table inside, it's plugged in. Um, and it's on a power strip and a surge protector and everything. Um, so the positive and the negative leads are now disconnected. It's safe to mess with this thing. Um, if I were to stick my hand in there, you would feel a little bit of a tingling sensation and that's you basically getting electrocuted. Um, if you look around the perimeter, you're gonna see these rods that stick up. They go all the way to the bottom of the tank. They are uh, three quarter inch uh, cold rolled steel rods. Um, or they're not rods, they're, they're square stock. Um, basically, I drill a hole through them, I attach these leads, and they connect all of the four steel rods on the outside of the tank to one another to create a perfect circuit. So these are anodes, so this is what the positive electricity is going to flow through. Um, so we attach the positive lead to the anodes, and we attach the negative lead to this little wire, which is what is suspending the piece that we're doing. So basically, in, in the simplest sense, we're creating a circuit. So the energy is flowing into the anodes, it is pulling, it's creating basically like a, like a, a it's, it's attracting the negative current that is coming from the, the cast iron skillet to the anodes and thus it's pulling all of the crap and crud and everything that's on the skillet or whatever to the anodes. So over time these will build up with stuff. I use a pretty bristly wire brush and I kind of get them there and I scrub them and get all the stuff off um, because if you don't, it, over time that stuff will um, basically uh, limit the amount of current that's able to get to the anodes. All right, so um, I'm gonna show you kind of just how I touch these things up after they've come out of the E-Tank. Um, pretty much the only thing that you're allowed to use to clean these, um, if I find out otherwise I'm gonna smack you, is uh, stainless steel, um, steel wool. Um, it's abrasive enough that it'll get the stuff off that's stuck on, but it's not abrasive enough that it's gonna really scrape or, or damage the cast iron. Uh, cast iron is typically uh, pretty indestructible but it can be scratched, it can be scraped, and it can be cracked. Um, so I'm gonna just turn the water on here. I kind of get it, you know, so that my hands aren't freezing cold. Um, you don't need a lot of water, just a little bit, you know, for the turtles. Uh, and then basically you're gonna just grab, you're gonna grab the skillet and you're gonna start scrubbing this stuff off. So as you see, it kind of, there it goes, it just disappears. So anything that's stuck from the E-Tank, come right off. Uh, if it's a little stubborn, you can use your fingernail. Um, I, uh, I've been doing it long enough, so I feel comfortable using a metal scraper. Um, I kind of just get in there and just kind of pop it off. Uh, I would not recommend you do that unless you've done it a lot and you know how much pressure you can apply without actually hurting the cast iron. Um, they also sell these little um, plastic scrapers. Um, at like auto parts stores. These are for putting like body filler on car panels and stuff like that. These work really well to get some of the, the flakier stuff off too. So between steel wool, the plastic scrapers, and these, you should be able to get 99.9% .9 of the stuff off the skillet. Um, if something is really stubborn and it's not coming off with, with stainless steel or scrapers, it's best to just put the thing back in the E-Tank and give it some more time because it's not ready. It's not worth damaging the skillet um, by trying to chip something off um, because if you do it incorrectly, you could, you could obviously hurt the piece. Um, being that these are historical pieces at this point, so most of them are over 100 years old, we like to keep them um, in as best shape as possible. So I'm gonna just continue to scrub until I don't see any more of that seasoning or crud on there. I don't want to scrub too hard. Again, it's recommended, if it doesn't come off with scrubbing, put it back in the E-Tank. I'm gonna say that a lot and stress that point because I don't want to hurt anything. All 
All right, everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned a little bit. Uh, make sure next time you're over at Grandma's house, you take a look in her cabinets and cupboards and see if she has a thousand dollar skillet laying around. You never know. You know, cast iron is super cool. I love learning about it, and I hope that some of you have been inspired to maybe get into it. Maybe just buying a pan or two, you know, is all you're really looking to do, and you're not crazy like me, and you have hundreds and hundreds of pieces. So if you're interested in buying a skillet, I do sell them. Um, all of my skillets are, are restored, crack-free, perfect condition, um, and I list them um, on Etsy. Um, I have an Etsy store, it's Sentiment Depot, that's S-E-N-T-I-M-E-N-T, -E -E Depot, D-E-P-O-T. So if you go on Etsy, you just type that in and it'll show you my page. You know, if you have any questions, you can feel free to comment um, on the video or you can message me through my Etsy store um, and I'd be happy to answer them. Um, so make sure uh, before you stop watching that you like and subscribe this channel. Um, if you want to see more videos, we'd be happy to make more. Um, and uh, thanks.